Kulti. Um, next to me, I have. I'm Savo. Uh, I speed on Halo One. All right. I think we're pretty much ready to go. Um, so I'm just gonna go here. And we're off. All right, first jung uh, first level here is Sierra. It's we're in the South African jungle here, and uh, we're gonna start off by killing one of our one of our friends. Ouch. He's dead. Uh, he actually dropped Trouble some grenades is there, which Got is gonna be useful coming up. There I did a sly jump, which is just Got jumping back. on a Riddle slope, um, and uh, if you fall on a slope and then jump immediately, you can gain some forward momentum. It's a nice way to. Uh, to get some good movement in this game. Here, uh, for example, I'm gonna get to an eleva elevated position to do a slide jump. There you go. Especially in this level, the start of the level doesn't really have enemies here, so you can go really crazy with the slide jump routing. Yeah, there I did a special jump to get up here, and I just bypassed the trigger that spawned some enemies. Uh, so there's going to be no enemies in this area coming up. Um, there's supposed to be like two phantoms flying in, dropping in a bunch of troops, but we're just going to be walking through an empty area here because we did, we skipped uh, the trigger, we walked around it. I think now is a good time to talk about checkpoints in this game. Now, the ch game, this game won't give you checkpoints while you're meleeing or jumping because it's, I mean, it won't give you checkpoints while you're in combat or while you're in the air because you could be falling off a cliff or you could be getting killed by an en enemy. So we can trick the game into thinking we're in combat uh, by mailing or jumping and uh, that'll actually delay checkpoints. So I'm gonna use that here. Uh, I could get some bad spawns here. It's kind of RNG, but uh, I'm try gonna try to mis minimize time loss if I die by delaying this checkpoint. There we go. Looks like we got decent spawns. Yeah, that's pretty good. We should make it through here, no problem. So just skipping this whole area of enemies by jumping on this pipe and jumping up here, and that's it. Gonna kill this guy for a checkpoint. Oh, he didn't die, so I probably won't get the checkpoint here. Skipping this area of enemies too. Just trying to get, uh, take a good path to uh, get past them so they can't shoot us. I'm gonna focus this chieftain here. Okay, we're past. It was sketchy, but we made it. Here is a small skip. There is a trigger for a small cutscene, kind of, at the floor here. By doing two brute shot boosts like that, we can skip the cutscene. Save for like seven or eight seconds. There you can really see how well you can combine the slide jumping with boosting yourself with explosives. And those just combine together to give you a really nice boost. So hopefully we can get a bubble shield drop here. We did, nice. Uh, I actually didn't get any brute shot ammo here, but I should be able to make do. It might come in, uh, get, give us some trouble later in the mission, but... Uh, this is completely the intended route for the level, by the way. Yeah, somehow Master Chief learned to swim in Halo 3, or rather walk underwater. Just skipping that entire area by, again, walking underwater, because that makes sense. This area is pretty cool. There's, you have random spawns here, but you can learn to adapt to all of them, and it's pretty fun. I got some pretty unfortunate ones here, so might be a bit slow. Sniper jackals in this game aren't quite as dangerous as the infamous ones from Halo 2, but they can still kill you really fast if you're not paying attention to them. Right. We're gonna again skip this section by combi combining a slide jump and an E jump to get across this gap. Throw a bubble shield to shield us from uh, some enemies. Gonna take out the Snipe Jackal because he's the biggest threat. And it's like we made it through. Now, there's something important I need to make sure about here. You see Johnson here, he needs to deload just like that. And that's gonna make sure he will be in the next area. If I didn't give Johnson time to deload there, then I would actually soft block the game because he wouldn't be in the next area and I wouldn't be able to soft, uh, finish the mission. Gonna be doing a slide jump here. 
Uh, didn't turn out too great. Hope the enemies don't shoot me. All right, we're good. You actually need to jump here because uh, otherwise the sniper jacket will shoot you. They kind of have a cooldown where they won't shoot you uh, for a certain amount of time once you've uh, went uh, went behind cover to kind of make it fair. Um, so we're kind of abusing that there. We're basically going around these enemies, making our way to the prison here to save Johnson. And after doing so, the level will be on a timer. Jump is a little hard sometimes. Alright, we got it. Now, dying here would be pretty bad. It can't happen. This section can be a little annoying. Uh, I'm gonna prioritize killing this chieftain because I really want his weapon, the uh, gravity hammer. You can do a lot of cool things with the gravity hammer in this game. It's kind of the main uh, weapon we use for speed tech. I'm gonna be using it for a skip at the end of this level. But like I said, we're just on a timer here, so we're trying to clear out some enemies around the prison here, trying to stay alive. Kind of the biggest threat right now is the. Uh, the sniper, there's one sniper left. I killed one. And there's two total. There he is. Oh, he is not playing nice right now. Alright, he's dead. So he could actually one shot me there, so. Had to worry about that guy. So the level should be ending fairly soon. We're just waiting for a pelican to come in, and the level will end. Oh, nice, we got the checkpoint. All right, I'm really happy about that. Now the pelican should be coming in just a second here, and it's supposed to uh, fly over there, and you're supposed to get on it like that, but we're gonna be doing something a little different. And we're in. Nice, that's really damn good, cool. That was a great Sierra. I think it was Deathless, right? Deathless so far. We're coming up on the second mission of the game, Crow's Nest here. Uh, it's a pretty cool level. Uh, definitely a lot of people like this level, myself included. Uh, the first part is uh, just kind of auto-scrollers though, so I'll probably do a donation while I walk to the first area. We've got a $77 donation from Bark saying, shoutouts to my buddy Sorex, Halo 3 world champion. Thank you, Dark. Hanger, Sergeant. Agreed. Master Chief, get there. Chief? Good. This channel is secure. Alright, we're almost at the first area here. There's a hallway full of enemies. Uh, I'm kind of going to try to kill a few of them and then try to run past and see how it goes. Grab, kill a few grunts. We are a few more grunts down, but grab a plasma pistol here. Throw a few nades. And now I'm going to focus the brute here. All right, we got him. And that'll cause his uh, grunts to panic here because I guess they're afraid that their leader died. They don't know what to do. Then we can just run past. All right, we have an, about a two minute auto scroller here where we're just gonna kill some enemies that comes out of phantoms. It's just a wave fight, so we can do auto scroll. Uh, sorry, we can do donations for a bit, for a few minutes. Yeah, I've got a few more donations here. Really looking forward to the uh, the Final Fantasy IX run. We've got a ten dollar donation from David Parker, uh, who says, "If Bird asks you, you have to do it." Quinna is punchy. We are comfy. Chase, stay chill, speed friends. And a twenty dollar donation from Kazooie saying, "Get comfy." Name Quinna punchy. So after this wave fight, uh, Sorts will get to show that this level is actually. It has a lot of backtracking, but the areas that you go through have changed since you were last there. So this is one of the levels that really shows off like how you can have a level that goes back and forth, but still be really cool and really interesting. Can do a few more donations while I take out these waves. Yeah. 
I'm going to give a quick plug to one of our sponsors here. We've got Chrono GG. They are a website that puts one game on sale for 24 hours and they are sponsoring ESA this year. So for every game sold through Chrono GG, a large part will be donated to Save the Children. You should actually take a look at it. They have a number of games that are being run coming up throughout the week. Can do one more. Got a $20 donation from Octatonic saying, Long time donator, first time watcher. Greetings from California. Donating to name Quinna Punchy. Alright, while well, I'm taking the. I'm gonna try to take out these last waves of enemies while walking backwards to save some travel time. See if I can get the shot here. There we go. And uh, as you can see, I've already finished the wave fight, wave fight and I'm already up at the door by doing that. So it saves some time. And now I'm gonna be walking to the next area for. A bit, so I can do like one more donation probably. Attention, outside the myself with a nade there. Are under I guess we should mention this game introduced the equipment uh, into Halo, so. He picked up a deployable cover earlier there, which can be then placed to form a, form a cover in front of you. Yeah, it's interesting. You can actually shoot through deployable covers or through one side with uh, weapons that shoot bullets, but not plasma weapons. So we're using that to our advantage here. Now, in the next section, there's talking about equipment, there's going to be a chieftain. We can drop either an invincibility or a flare. Now we really want him to drop an invincibility, but it's random whichever you drop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I get a checkpoint there, and next now delay this checkpoint so I don't get a checkpoint in this next area. And what that does is I get a checkpoint before the chieftain is loaded, and since equipment is decided on when the enemy spawns in, I actually get a second chance of getting an invincibility if he doesn't drop one. But he did drop one there, so it's nice. And uh, now you're going to be getting to see, I guess, the main speed tech in this game using the gravity hammer. This is where the real level really picks up. I'm going to be setting up this grate here. It's an object I can use to do a hammer launch, just like that. I kind of got stuck there a bit, but still pretty fast. And another one coming up. Oh. All right. I don't know what that was. Gonna be killing these drones for checkpoint. There it is. And another ham launch. We died. Oh, that was a bit too high and a bit too fast. Uh, there we go. And that just skipped like a minute and a half of gameplay. That's one of the biggest skips in the game. So you're probably wondering how the hell hammer launching works. Uh, well, it's kind of weird. The physics in this game are weird, but the gist of it is you get a lot. When, that, when you swing the hammer, it kind of creates, uh, creates some force, kind of like a, an explosion. And uh, if you hammer into an object, the, that explosion will be behind the object. So the object ends up being pushed into you and giving you a launch, because that makes sense. This fight is pretty cool here. Gonna be killing two enemies, and that's gonna spawn this way at the top. I used the pelican to get up here, by the way. You're not supposed to be on that. And we kill that wave of enemies, and that's gonna spawn a s another wave down here, which we're gonna try to spawn kill. All right, very good. And now we just need to clean up a few more enemies. Can be pretty annoying to clean this up if they're in bad spots, but that was pretty good. Good crow's nest so far. This door is gonna open and there's gonna be a few enemies to get through. It's pretty easy to get through here. The main cause of death here is actually not the enemies but your allies nading you. So happy we was able we were able to avoid that. This is gonna be another Cortana moment. You saw this early in the level. The kind of I guess the kind of cutscenes, they slow you down. You can still like move during them but they just slow you down and 
like op occupy your screen a bit. I picked up uh, another equipment, the uh, active camo, during that later last fight, and I'm gonna use this that here to get past these enemies easily. And the next area is the bomb room. A lot of people think this uh, room is really hard, but uh, it's not that bad. We're gonna be going up here. There's actually an Easter egg there, the skull. Gonna throw a grenade on that uh, turret guy to get him off, and uh, yeah, we're through. Easy peasy. And uh, now we're actually just pretty much gonna be walking to the end of the level. We have some explosives and hammers to boost ourselves, so it'll be a bit more interesting than last time we took this way, this route. There will be a, great deal of hard a common theme is we're gonna be using hammer hammer uh, boosts to uh, get through those moments because it obviously saves a lot of time as you'd be walking really slowly otherwise. Here I'm gonna do a kind of a weird thing. I'm gonna be chaining a melee and a reload of this drone because when you melee an enemy at an enemy th in this game it gives you a lunge towards them to help you connect the melee. And uh, you can actually cancel that launch so the melee doesn't connect and do any damage. And then you can do another melee and you can just chain that together and uh, basically follow an enemy like that. That mechanic of meleeing enemies to gain boost is used very heavily in Halo 2. Not so heavily in this game, but has it used somewhere. Alright, and that's gonna be the end of the level pretty much. We're on about a 35 second timer here, so you can do a couple donations. If you have any. We got a ten dollar donation from Henjo saying shoutouts to the best Halo 3 run ESA has ever seen. Thank you. Also got a ten dollar donation from Yangus saying good luck on the run, Sorex. Hopefully Ark treats you nice. Thank you, Jack. And do one more. I just want to say as well, all your donations are going towards some prizes given to us by Elgato. You are in the drawing to try and win an Elgato green screen for all your streaming needs. All right, we're coming up on Savo Highway, the uh, kind of driving level of this game. Uh, we're going to get a Warthog at the start of the mission, and we're pretty much going to drive it all the way to the end. If I shoot this marine, it actually skips some of his dialogue and uh, gets him in my warthog earlier. And I'm actually, yes, I'm actually gonna get marines in my warthog because they act as damage sponges. Um, and so I'll take a lot less damage if I have marines in my warthog. It, uh, it's pretty much impossible to get to the, the next areas without this if you do the same run I do. The driving in this game is pretty cool. Um, it's it's pretty weird and uh, momentum based. Like it takes a long time to accelerate, so you want to keep your speed at all costs. Uh, it's pretty interesting. The uh, aisle for this level is really fast and actually incredibly impressive. Just on that first uh, driving section, the aisle is about one or two seconds ahead of me. So. Very impressive how much you can optimize the driving in this game. Still can't get the commander. Comms are a mess. Pelicans are scattered. Best thing now, get some distance. This next area is going to be full of enemies, pretty much, and uh, this is the area area I'm picking up the marines for, pretty much. This it's basically impossible to get through this area if you don't have two marines, uh, at least if you're going to drive through it like this. There we go. We through. Oh, we got fruit shot in a little bit. That's fine. This next area, I'm actually gonna dish my marines because they're not useful anymore, and I want a new and uh, nice warthog that's not damaged. I'm getting out a bit away from it because it's gonna hopefully give me a checkpoint. Let's see. If you punch this wall, it gives you a gravity lift. Alright, hopefully we can get through here. Ooh. That was interesting. Let's see if it works. Alright, I got through somehow. 
So in this next area, I picked up a grab lift uh, in, the na in the last area. In this next area, I'm going to use it. You're supposed to get out on foot, but uh, I mean, a common theme in Halo speedruns is really taking vehicles where you're not supposed to. And uh, we're going to keep on with that theme in Halo 3 here. So we're just going to put a grab lift down here, and uh, it's going to let us get past here with the Warthog. So normally there's, in this area, you're supposed to be on foot, there's supposed to be like a wave fight. It's like two phantoms dropping in a bunch of enemies, but you can actually just drive past it. So that's what we're gonna do. This is debris I'm kind of driving on here, it has really weird collision. Um, it, the uh, collision is nowhere near where the actual textures are. It's pretty... Oh, wow. Yeah, shoppers in this game. They actually pretty much insta-kill you if uh, you have an on-front collision with them. Speaking of choppers, I'm gonna switch to a chopper here. Mainly because the choppers, in this the choppers have a weird uh, kind of... I don't know if it's a mechanic or if it's intended or not, but you can kind of drive on walls with them. So we're going to be using that to easily get past this area now. There's a bunch of enemies in this area, but you can just boost up this wall, kind of riding it, and uh, we're past. Coming up on the ending of the level, uh, for the level eight to end, you need to... There's two things you need to do. You need to destroy the turret in this area, and you need to destroy that energy barrier, the blue, big blue thing you're seeing over there. So I'm going to fire some precise fuel rods to hopefully take down. Yep, turret died. Energy barrier is gone and the level's just gonna end. There we go. That's Salvo Highway. <laughs> Could probably do one donation while we wait for the next mission to come in. We got a ten dollar donation from Danza saying brilliant run so far. Great start. Best of luck on the rest of the runs Oryx putting on a fantastic show. Thank you Danza. So, interestingly enough, uh, this you can't get on this Warthog, you're completely relying on this Marine to drive you to the start of the mission. Uh, he actually doesn't take the same driving path uh, every time. You can actu It's actually random, and uh, you can lose up to one second if he's randomly just bad at driving for some reason. It's pretty weird. Can I actually kill the driver here, because it's faster than telling him to get out, so... Don't worry, we're killing him for the sake of speed. Gonna be taking the Warthog through this area. I need to get out to uh, open up some doors, however. So we press this button, it's gonna open up a couple doors so we can get the Warthog through. We're actually on our timer here. Uh, you can't really complete this area in less than... Oh, about... Yeah, that's... Okay. Fine. Uh, like I was saying, you can't really complete this area in less than about one minute. You're on a timer. I'm not sure why. There's like some weird triggers or something. I don't know. I just run the game, man. So now I can press this button. We wouldn't have been able to before. Hopefully we get a check one here. Okay, I guess not. Uh, so if I die here, it's a pretty long revert. So let's not die. I'm gonna take out the turret of this phantom. Use a nade and some fuel rods. Ah, unfortunate. So it's going to be a pretty long revert. Because uh, unfortunately we didn't get a checkpoint. The uh, checkpoints in this game are, in uh, classic hero fashion, pretty stupid and uh, inconsistent. So A lot of times you're just relying on getting a checkpoint. And uh, sometimes the game just won't give it to you. Alright, so let's get through here again. Best way to get through the here is with the warthog. And as you can see, I'm actually not able to press the button until this is loading down in the corner, so I pretty much dead that as fast as possible. Okay, we got the checkpoint this time. Atmospheric disturbance is intensifying above the artifact, Admiral. Alright, let's try this again. 
I know we'll get it done. Take out this A Wraith and two ghosts, hopefully. And that should trigger the door to the next area to open up. Alright, loading done. That means the uh, door is going to open. We're going to be able to proceed. We're going to be getting out of our ghost here. It's a lot safer. You can, uh, you can actually take the ghost through and it's, it's faster, but it's really risky. It's more of an IL strat, really. So, we're coming up on the second lake bed here of Storm, which is going to be a way fight. It's a pretty cool way fight, though. Uh, and it's, you can actually speed it up, because the, ga the way the game checks to uh, send in the next wave is, are there any phantoms on the map? So, if you destroy phantoms, you can actually make the next wave come in faster. So, I'm going to try to do some of that, at least. See how it goes. Right, actually. It's important that he leaves the Mongoose there in a good location because he's going to be needing it later. And if it's parked the wrong way, then one of the Marines can get in and drive it away. Yeah. Oh, I've actually died to that Hornet hitting me like yesterday. Taking out this Phantom, which should spawn in the next wave uh, faster. It can actually be a little risky because sometimes enemies from the Phantom can uh, can survive and if there's a single enemy from the Phantom alive then it'll prevent the next wave from coming in completely. I actually need to take out one of these uh, choppers as well for the next wave to come in. Alright, so next wave should be coming in. We see the Phantom here. There it is. Alright. So I'm shooting a rocket here to kill the two two ghosts that drops off and then I'm gonna go destroy the other phantom. The reason we're destroying this phantom is this one leaves a lot later. So there's no, no point in destroying the other phantom. Oh, what is it doing? There's no point in destroying the other phantom unless you're gonna kill both. So that's where, why we're only killing this one. I think there's a ghost stock. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not getting the dialogues. There's something stuck in there. Oh, there we go. So, like I said, like Sabu said, I'm gonna be doing a skip here. Uh, I need to get this mongoose through this door, and there's actually a barrier preventing me from getting vehicles through, but uh, it's pretty easy to get through because <laughs> it actually isn't uh, affected. The barrier actually doesn't affect you while you're not in the vehicle, so you just step back. I'm gonna put my vehicle in a precise spot here and see if it works. This is really precise, it might take a couple tries. Okay, there we go. We're through the door. So, the way you may be wondering how that works. Well, when you exit a vehicle in this game, the game pretty much checks for the uh, closest safe place to spot to put you, which is pretty much anywhere that's not out of bounds. So, if we put a vehicle in a very specific spot there, uh, then the closest place will just be on the other side of that door. So go through. Not skipped a fight with a scarab. Um, oh, pretty much a, uh, a scarab fight, a big tank enemy you'll see later in the game. That would take about a minute to complete, so save a minute doing that. Getting through this warehouse can be a little tricky sometimes if the enemies don't treat you well. Pretty much just use as many rockets as we can to get through. Picked up a bubble shield there, that's nice. Gonna use that here to get past these guys. Gonna be getting the load off that truck so we can jump in through this window. Breaking this other window, grabbing the sniper, and hopefully we'll get a invincibility from this chieftain. Could drop us a flare, which wouldn't be nice, but wouldn't be the end of the world. Okay, we hit it, drop us an invincibility, that's good. So, it's gonna be useful to uh, do the last part of the level. I'm trying to zigzag here a bit so the hunters won't hit me. Uh, I'm gonna be grabbing a plasma pistol here while I walk past these enemies using the invincibility. They can't 
damage me right now. And here there's a big anti-air gun that you, the level ends when you destroy it. And you destroy it by shooting that core that just dropped down that I sniped a bit. Uh, you're supposed to go up there, kill a bunch of enemies, destroy the core. But you can actually just shoot a precise plasma pistol shot to destroy it from far away. There we go. Alright, coming up is probably the coolest level in the game, uh, level in the game, at least for, I'd say, a casual viewer. Uh, the reason it's really, really nice and fast is because we get a hammer right at the start of the level, and uh, there's a lot of boxes in this level, so we can use those to do a bunch of hammer launches. The flood. It's spreading all over the city. Starting off, it's just a short walk, though. Find the crashed flood ship. Overload its engine. Either destroy this city or risk losing the entire planet. All right, I'm gonna throw a nade at this box to hopefully get, enough, get it in a favorable favorable position to do a box launch. Uh, looks pretty good. I angle it a bit. All right, that was good. Oh, what? Uh, all right, I don't know what's going on with my controller, but it's, for some reason it's disconnecting sometimes. All right, so that was a good box launch. We're gonna angle this box using a spike grenade and then do another box launch off that. Alright. Here we're gonna do another launch, actually a cone launch. There we go. Uh, it's the same premise as a, as a launch with a hammer, except we're using a cone to knock us forward instead. I'm gonna be grabbing this deployable cover through the ceiling there, because we're gonna be needing it for a trick coming up. Much like Sierra, there's a Cortana moment trigger, cutscene trigger, on the floor here. So we're gonna play some uh, The Floor is Lava with this box to avoid it. There we go. You can uh, actually just jump over this area. It's a small, like, tight corridor with a bunch of enemies. It's nice to skip. And uh, coming up is the trick we're gonna be doing with the DC launch here. It's a pretty cool DC launch. See if I can get it. This is a really difficult trick. First try. So that's that's where we launch from. And uh, how does that work? Well, I don't know. You get yourself uh, stuck in the object. The game doesn't like it. If you walk in a precise way, it gives you a bunch of speed. It's worth mentioning at this point. I think that. Uh, he's playing on the original Xbox version, where the DC launchers are quite a bit weaker than on the Master Chief Collection version. But uh. the enemies uh, behave differently between the versions, so that's why he's playing on the original version. Alright, another DC launch here, if I can get it. First try. Alright, two for two. Good for gates. You're gonna be seeing the first grave mine moment of the game. Instead of Cortana talking us and slowing us down and bothering us, it's now the flood grave mind. I'm using some hammer boost to get through faster. Almost at the end of the level here. There's gonna be one more grave mine moment, but I'm gonna try to com combine a slide jump and a hammer boost to try to get to the end level trigger in the cutscene, which is, or during the moment, which is essentially going to skip the moment. Level ends when you hit this button, which I just did. Alright, that's Floodgate. That was a really good Floodgate. Yeah, 316 is really good. I usually say a sub-320 is, is amazing, so... That was great. We're coming up on... Uh, Kind of, I guess, the hard part of this game. Ark and Covenant. This is Ark. Next level after that will be Covenant. The two really, lo uh, the two long, pretty brutal, hard levels. Um, first, I'm personally, I'm of the opinion that Ark isn't all that bad. It's really Covenant you need to look out for, but they're both uh, definitely two of the some of the hardest missions in the game. And I was actually holding B during that cutscene. For some, like, if you hold B or whatever present button you have uh, bound to uh, exiting vehicles, 
You can actually just press it there to get on a little faster. Hopefully I get this checkpoint. Alright, good. Small slide jump here. And we're gonna try to get this past this area. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kill the leader brute, which is gonna make, hopefully, make all the grunts disperse. And we can just run past. There we go. Oh! Got shot by some enemies. That's pretty rare, but it happens. Wait, it's fine, we'll just try it again. Almost died to a suicide grunt there. Alright, we're gonna be killing these two enemies. Get through in the cave. And here I'm gonna be doing a pretty cool strat. Kill this sniper jackal first so he can't bother us. Oh, he's supposed to die two shots. Uh, and there we go. I combine a brute shot jump and a hammer jump to get up this uh, to this ledge early and essentially skip that entire area. So in this area, uh, I'm pretty much just gonna skip this too. I'm gonna walk past all the enemies, grab a rocket launcher, which is gonna come in very useful for the next parts of this level, and then I'm just gonna bail, walk up here, see what happens. Shoot a rocket there, perfectly kills all the enemies that it's in this prowler vehicle right here. You can just grab it. Hopefully drive through this next area without too much trouble. Sometimes the enemies can be a little bothersome, but usually it's fine. Alright, didn't even get... Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I jinxed it. Thankfully the checkpoint here isn't too far away. Yeah. Oh dear. Be merciful. Alright, we're gonna ditch the problem here because it kinda sucks to be honest. Grab this ghost instead. It's a lot faster. And uh, much like the chopper, the ghost can uh, climb walls. And we're gonna be using that to our advantage here. There's some pretty precise ghost driving here. As you can see, the ghost is quite adept at uh, driving on steep angles or steep slopes. We actually skip a trigger there by going up there, so there's supposed to be enemies in this area, but I skipped the trigger that spawns them, so there are none. This, there's a fight coming up here. I'm gonna be going out of my way to shoot a few troublesome enemies. I'm gonna be lining up a rocket shot here with my sniper rifle and then switch my rocket. Shoot a precise shot like that. It's a pretty cool strat. And now I'm gonna get out here, ram into this turret to destroy it. More this raid. It's not much of a threat now that the gunner is dead. Try to snipe some of these brutes. Alright. There's gonna be two ghosts coming out in this corner. I'm gonna try to shoot through the rocket launcher. Oh, they trolled me a bit there. Yeah. Alright, that's fine. Just try it again. Yeah, those ghosts are supposed to come around the corner pretty fast, but uh, sometimes they like to troll you and just wait around for a bit. That'd be quite annoying. I'm not the best at sniping, by the way, as you can see. Alright, let's try this again. Alright, ghost, be nice. You're not being nice. Alright, we got it. I need to be really careful that a brute doesn't get in my ghost here. Which they're probably gonna try to do. 
I don't see any. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna be needing that ghost for a pretty cool trick coming up. So now the... Uh, should be a cutscene starting pretty soon here. Hopefully, yeah. Got the dialogue trigger there. Now, if you look at the sky here, the thing starts sooner. Because Bungie wants you to see their cool cutscene. Now, this, this is like a cutscene of a, this ship coming down, and when it comes down, it gets some wind in the air. So, I'm gonna use that wind to get up on this cliff. And if I go out here, I can break the barrier that's supposed to block you from going out of bounds. But my vehicle is still inbounds, so if I get in my vehicle right, right now, I'll go back inbounds. So, I need to push it far enough out of bounds. Oh. Ah, alright. Bring her down. Roger that. Beginning my descent. The reason he's doing this uh, out of bounds here is that the upcoming section is filled with enemies and you basically have to take the tank that the ship drops off to get through there if you're not going out of bounds. Yeah, the tank is really slow. Uh, it just... Alright, we got the checkpoint That's this time. Nice. Should be fine now. Uh, I think it should be far enough out of bounds here. Should be fine. Yeah, definitely good. So yeah, now we're out of bounds with a ghost. So yeah, we can skip the this the entire area below us. It's supposed to you're supposed to get a tank, drive to kill a bunch of enemies. It's really slow. Takes like a minute extra than doing this. So I don't know. It's really cool because there aren't really any other out of bounds strats in this game. Or at least not anymore. Gonna be dropping back inbounds here. Uh, we have t there's a fight here that we have to do to open up a door so we can progress through the mission. Uh, normally you would have a tank for this fight, but uh, all we have is a ghost, so we're gonna have to come up with some special ways to get through it. I'm gonna jump up here early, combining a sly jump and a brute shot boost like that. Get on this ledge. Destroy this turret first of all. There's going to be a phantom coming in. This phantom is supposed to drop off a load of troops. But if you just destroy it like that, then it won't drop off any troops. And that skips a bunch of enemies. So now that we killed that phantom early, we're going to be backtracking here, killing a few wraiths that are required to uh, open up the door. Alright, uh, this wraith is in a bad spot. He might shoot me here. Okay, we're good. Oh! Alright, that was close. One wraith shot kills you, by the way, if it makes direct contact. Alright, we killed enough, so now we're just gonna be making our way back to the door. You don't need to kill er absolutely everything. The, the only important thing is to kill the troops that the phantoms drop off and the two wraiths. So, now we're just gonna be waiting for this door to open. I do. I actually need to go back to get a chopper. Uh, now, if you play this game casually, you probably know there's supposed to be like a small flying robot that's supposed to open the, this uh, door up for us. But uh, by going out of bounds there, we actually skipped some triggers that spawns him here or that teleports him towards you. So he's not here, but uh, sorry to break your immersion, but he actually doesn't cause the door to open. It's just on a timer. So. Alright, now he spawns because we had the trigger that teleports him forward. So he's gonna be opening opening up this door for us. Hit this button because it opens the door to the next area. And actually it's supposed to let our let our troops through to the next area as well. We uh we're not supposed to have a chopper in this area by the way. We're just kind of doing whatever we want. Bungie isn't very good at restricting vehicle access, apparently. Um, so, there's gonna be a Scarab here. Uh, you would have seen a Scarab for the first time on Storm, but we skipped that one. So this is the first Scarab you're gonna see. It's a huge tank vehicle that uh, you destroy by shooting at in the back, in the core. Um, it's gonna be coming through there. You can't really see it right now, but trust me, it's gonna come in there. We're on a timer right now, 
the Scarab would only come in so fast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up here at the bi at the base here, and the Scarab's gonna be coming down here, and uh, we're just gonna board it like that. And I have to wait here because it's actually invincible for a bit. There we go. Now it's dead. Just killed it right as it spawned. And the Scarab is actually the only thing you need to kill in this area. There's like five wraiths, ten choppers, two ghosts, and a bunch of other ground troops. But the only thing you need to kill is the Scarab. So we need to make our way up to the next area. But it's blocked by a bunch of enemies. So uh, instead of trying to go through th those enemies, we're just going to go around. Chopper is good at doing jumps. So we're going to use this as a, as a ramp to get up here. Drive up here with the chopper, and uh, we're gonna be able to drop down below, pretty much right where we need to go. Oh! All right, I guess that worked out. Now I'm gonna. There's two marines that are gonna drop off this pelican. I'm just gonna kill one of them in cold blood here. There we go. He's dead. That feels well. makes me feel good. Seriously though, yeah. I mean, I guess it's for the sake of speed. Also, there's uh, supposed to be a dialogue between Guilty Spark and that marine, but uh, if you just kill him, there won't be any dialogue. Kill that, Boots. That's uh, peeing, by the way. That's an Easter egg. The layer checkpoint here. Luckily, we have a bubble shield, which is going to help us get to the next area. These guys are sleeping, so... Not going to bother us. In the next area, however, there's going to be a few enemies that are going to try to take us out, but... Uh, hopefully, we'll make through here just fine. The ball there to block some fire, and we're through. We're gonna need to come back through this room, but uh, some of the enemies will be gone, and there's gonna be a few new enemies. So, bigger cutscene there, and uh, we're gonna be going back through that room with uh, a few new enemies now. Um, we need to go back to the lower level to get escorted out. That's kind of the lore of this mission right now. Through here, hopefully. Ah, we got overcharged there by the jackals, so we didn't have any shields coming in. Just a little unfortunate. Hopefully, we can kill them this time, so they won't bother us. All right, that's better. There's four camo brutes we need to kill. Well, we don't actually need to kill them, uh, but we kind of need to kill them. It's possible to get uh, for the to end the level without killing them, but uh, it's not really viable because the way the game uh, checks for the end of the level is it checks if there are any any enemies uh, in the end section, and if you don't kill them, they'll just end up getting into the next section, and we're gonna have to be killing them enemy anyways. So it's better to kill them uh, early rather than late. You may be wondering why these brutes are just sitting here, not doing anything. I think you're, supp you're supposed to be like dueling this chieftain, one one v one, and uh, they're supposed to be watching. But we kind of just break the rules and kill them. And uh, that was the last enemy in this area, so that's gonna trigger the end of mission. So now there's just gonna be a pelican coming in on a timer. Can probably do a donation while we wait for the next mission to start. Yeah, we got a five dollar twenty three cent donation from Paradoxic saying fantastic run, Zorix, keep it up. He did ask if you were gonna get first try storm mongoose skip. <laughs> Thank you, Para. Alright, this next mission is uh, probably the hardest in the game, I would say, on legendary. Uh, starting off it drops us right into combat and uh, wants us to complete a fight here. But we're going to do something a little unorthodox. We're actually just going to not do this fight. 
Well, we're gonna kill some enemies, I guess. Commander, like, maybe help us fight. Yeah. Pretty much taking out these turrets as they are the biggest threat. Gonna be lasing this uh, Wraith here. Um, it's a special Wraith, it's an anti-air Wraith that Bungie didn't want you to be able to enter for some reason. So, keep that in mind. Gonna be killing this chief then because he's the biggest threat right now. The suicide gun's good. Oh. <laughs> Alright, uh, I might be able to make this work. No, okay, we're gonna have to revert. That's quite the awkward situation for what he's trying to do here, oh, yeah. which you will see shortly. Oh yeah, something I haven't mentioned is every time I'm dying, instead of like waiting for me to just go back to the next uh, to my last checkpoint, I'm hitting revert to checkpoint. Every time you die, it saves like four seconds. So again, I'm gonna be damaging that AA wraith, not necessarily killing it. Destroying it, rather. Again, take us the chieftain. Then, alright, hopefully... Alright, I need to take out the uh, kind of thing that's blocking me here. Now I can see the driver of this A-Raid. It's gonna be... And if I put myself in a precise, precise spot, kill the driver, I can get in like that. And we just skipped the entire fight, pretty much. So the way that works is, uh, the way Bungie prevented you from getting in this is uh, after the driver dies, the thing just explodes. But there's actually like one frame in between the driver dying and uh, the wraith exploding that uh, you have um, some time to enter the wraith. So if I get, I get, get myself in a precise spot where the board prompt won't show up, but the enter wraith board uh, prompt will show up, then I can just hold uh, the button to enter it and uh, get in just like that on the one frame I have uh, available. So yeah, we're taking the wraith up here. I could mention it's actually a little faster to do that fight if you do it really well. Um, but uh, I thought this strat is pretty cool to show off, and uh, it's pretty. S it's, I, I would say it's pretty safe too. Maybe even safer than doing the fight. Grab a beam rifle here and switch to the ghost. Now in this area, there's again a bunch of enemies that we're just gonna skip. Uh, gonna be trying to get through this hallway by just kind of brute forcing our way through. I look up into the ceiling to avoid uh, the aim assist because it would just take me into the wall or something a lot of the time. Kill that brute because uh, I'm I don't actually need to kill him. He's not uh, a threat to me right now, but I'm gonna be coming back through here, back down here, and all the enemies gonna be still gonna be here. So if I take that brute out now. I don't need to deal with them later. There's a fight I need to do here. There's a chieftain and four other brutes. Gonna be throwing a power drain. It's gonna be taking down all the shields. Get the chieftain, just like that. Get inside that tower. And uh, now clean up all the brutes, hopefully. Uh, just wait for shields here. Oh, he killed himself. Chief, find the tower controls and shut it down. Alright, so... That chieftain dropped me in uh, invincibility, which is pretty important for this section. Uh, if he had dropped me a flare, I would have had to get through this section slowly. Had to, would have to probably clear out some enemies, but he dropped me an invent so I can just use it and uh, pretty much just run through them. I guess I can try a small little hammer launch here too. And now we're going to be picking up a uh, camouflage here. It's going to be used later in the mission. Got Warthog here. We need to get back to the beach that we uh, started the mission at. Oh, alright. Nice recovery. <laughs> Thank you. Can probably do one donation while I drive back down. 
Yeah, we got a $5 donation from Sam Biles. Thank you very much for your donation there. So here you're going to see me driving the Warthog downhill, which the Warthog is really fast downhill. Uh, probably the second fastest vehicle in the game, driving a Warthog downhill, only second to the Banshee, which we actually don't see in this run at all. It's a little unfortunate. So here I'm going to be getting in... Uh, Hornet, and the uh, funny thing about the Hornet, it actually flies faster if you go diagonally. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. It's it's by a, quite a margin, too. I think it saves around 5 seconds in just this short flying section. Speaking of diagonally, it's also w faster walking diagonally in uh, Cortana moments and Gravemind moments while you're slow, and it's also faster if you're holding a special turret like the missile pod or uh, a machine gun. Objective in sight, Commander. So we're getting up to the third tower now. We need to clear out this tower too, Understood. just like we did with the first tower. Again, gonna ignore the enemies that are guarding it and just try to get that right in. We need to kill a few here that are directly in our way. Oh, all right. Alright, hopefully I get this checkpoint here. There we go, nice. Uh, I need to kill, I think it's 8 drones for them to disperse. Otherwise they're just gonna bother me and it's pretty much impossible to get through here without killing them. So we kill those. Again, get on an elevator just like before. And uh, again, there's gonna be a chieftain and 4 brutes we need to take down. But these are gonna be different brutes. I'm gonna do some different strats to get through. Gonna be... Getting a collateral shot on two of them there, and another collateral shot, and they're all dead. And I actually did an A jump to get up here a little faster. And now we're just gonna back smack the chief and like that. Hit the switch, chief, and the barrier will fall. Now we need to get back down and. Uh, now there's flood here, unfortunately. Shipmaster, what's your status? Significant damage. Weapon system disabled. So now we're gonna have both flood and uh, covenant aliens to fight. Uh, hope I'm gonna try a box launch here to get through this area a little faster and easier. Right, something. Um, throw a nade here to kill some of these enemies. Cause they'll just block me otherwise here. I think I should be fine here because the enemy should be distract distracted by my ally Arbiter here. Oh, I spoke too soon. See, so yeah, unfortunately we didn't get a checkpoint so the revert is pretty far here. This is probably the worst part of this level. It uh, can be really brutal. Sometimes the, the game just doesn't want you to go through. Especially if you don't get the checkpoint, it's, it's annoying. Hopefully we'll get it this time. Alright, I guess we don't get a checkpoint. Again, gonna be doing the box launch here. Grabbing some rockets here. It's gonna come in a little useful later. And we're just gonna grab the warthog. This is another area where you're supposed to take the tank through, but the tank j the tank is just slow and it's pretty easy to take the warthog through here. So we're gonna do that instead because it's um, a lot faster. Usually you can just drive past these enemies. There we go. And uh, the intended route is to go to the left, and uh, there's a bunch of enemies to the left, so I don't really want to go there. So I'm going to be driving up this cliff instead, that's just uh, conveniently here. And that just skipped a whole lot of enemies. I have to actually slow down to get down this ledge, because otherwise uh, I would die to the fall timer, 
which uh, the fall timer is a uh, mechanic in this game where if you fall fast enough for a certain amount of time, then the game just kills you in midair. Alright, this is the two scarab fight. It can be pretty annoying. As you just heard, we have two scarabs. Repeat, two scarabs. I actually need to wait to kill the scarab because it's a little weird. If you kill it too fast, it's not invincible like the orc and the storm uh, scarab, but it's like jerks around if you try to kill it while it's in its in its starting animation. And uh, I don't know, it's weird. Nick Nick kills you if you try to kill it too fast. First All units, All right. That's the worst part over. Oh, my hornet uh, actually in a good spot. Alright, I think that was first try, which is really good. Gonna switch to a ward huggy here, which we're gonna use for a small skip. And uh, now again, we're gonna be killing our allies for the sake of speed. Oh, maybe not. Oh. Yeah, he's kind of trolling me here. Oh, what am I getting shot from? Yeah, so I wanted to kill the Arbiter here because it would skip his dialogue that he has right now. But uh, sometimes he just trolls you, so you can't really kill him. And uh, here's the small skip. Just like uh, how I got the stor Mongoose through the storm area, I can just like get out like that. Oops. Get in the turret. And uh, get the Warthog too, because there's a barrier there that's supposed to block vehicles to get through. And uh, here the Warthog is just gonna deload. And that skipped a uh, Cortana moment and some walking. And, uh, well, this Cortana moment is gonna trigger at the same time as this cutscene, which is gonna have the effect that I'm gonna have this <laughs> effect on my screen for a few seconds here. So I'm setting up a really cool, really big box launch here. Let's see if I can get it. Alright, there we go. So you get a lot more power from box launches if the box is tilted uh, in like 45 degrees. So that's why I was able to get such a big launch there. Well, I wanted to kill that chieftain, but it looks like I'm not going to be able to. Yeah. And uh, fun fact, it's possible to soft lock here completely randomly. We have no idea what causes it, so let's hope it doesn't happen. Alright, we're good. Sometimes the, the screen just is black forever and there's no way to get out of it. It's just a soft lock. And again, we have no idea what causes it. Gonna be doing a nade and a hammer boost here. Get through this area more faster. Killing these FUD. And uh, it's gonna be some cool, quick hammer launches here to finish the level. We're almost done. Oh, didn't get a too much of a hammer launch there, but it's something. You get a lot more power than that. One more uh, Cortana moment. And uh, now we're just gonna be... Oh, well, I was gonna do ha do one more hammer launch to get over there, but... The box wasn't in a favorable position. Sometimes the enemies just knocks it over. And uh, there's not really anything we can do. We can do uh, maybe one donation while we wait for uh, the next level to start. That's great, we got a $25 donation from Anonymous, and we've also got another $25 donation from Jimmy Dallard saying, Greetings from England! So happy to get comfy and enjoy the great speedruns today. Donation goes to naming Quinna Punchy. Alright, 1346, that's pretty good. Sub 14. So the next level is Cortana. Now, if you play this game casually on Legendary, you'll probably remember this level very well. I get a lot of people coming into my stream and saying, oh, Cortana, it's the hardest mission. It's so hard. Uh, it took me hours to beat on Legendary. But uh, 
in the speed run is actually not that bad. There's uh, a bunch of camouflages uh, spread throughout the level, so we can just like pretty much walk through it without having to bother with much of the enemies. Child of my enemy, and it might get no. I don't think I there's a. I could get a skip here, but I don't think I'm gonna get it. To his son. No, okay, but if I it was if I was able to get that gray mine moment overlap with this Cortana moment, then they would just end as at the second gray uh, Cortana moment would end at the same time as the second moment. So it would, it would effectively skip one of the the moments. This first area is probably the hard, the worst of the second hard, worst part of this level. Looks like we got through it uh, without a hitch here. There we go. Uh, by the way, there's a lot of uh, gray mine and Cortana moments in this level, so uh, of course you yeah. Came for her. We exist together now. It's kind of annoying from a speedrun standpoint. These Cortana and gray mine moments—they just kind of slow you down and. Are kind of annoying. They do have some some speed tech involved, I guess, but uh, I am. kind of just in the way, to be honest. It's another moment right here. I think I think I counted once, and I think there's nine or eleven <laughs> of these in total throughout the level, it's like the same amount as the entire game combined. I think. Alright, we're gonna get a hammer here, which isn't that useful in this level because there aren't really that many things we can launch off of, but we're still gonna be using it for, I guess, some launches. This first one being here, a small launch, I guess I threw this area a little easier. And I picked up a camouflage there, which is uh, gonna help me get to another section. And, uh, oh, got shot by some enemies there. You may have noticed as well that he dropped his deployable cover there, and I believe he will be using it later too. Blind back up. Oh yeah, that's gonna be coming uh, use useful later. Gonna do a sword cancel here. Who's a sword cancel aren't in Halo 3? Saving the frames. Pick up a brute shot here because it's a lot more useful than the sword. And here we're gonna use the camouflage to get past a few of these enemies. Would be pretty hard to get through here otherwise. And uh, there's not really a shortage, shortage of camouflage, so we can just kind of use them as much as we want in this level. I'm uh, mailing here to the layer checkpoint. I'm gonna be trying a fast strat in this uh, next room. It's called Hell Room. Uh, there's like a very small room packed with a ton of enemies, and uh, I'm gonna try to get through it fast. All right, there we go. That's a pretty hard strat. Yeah, you, you're combining a spike uh, spike grenade with a brute shot boost, and it gets you a lot of height, and you're able to just get to the top level immediately and skip like so much. There are slower ways to do that. Uh, to do that room, that are a lot safer, but that's the fastest way. Again, the Linga check one here. I'm gonna be doing a pretty big uh, hammer launch here. Again, using a tilted box to get a lot of power. Might not be enough. Oh, oh, just barely. And here I'm uh, hammering my way through this Cortana moment. Uh, there's gonna be another Cortana moment in this hallway, but if I hammer my way through this one fast enough, then I'll overlap the two. There we go, That the second one just started. And now the first one is gonna end, and it's gonna end the second one prematurely, so I can just skip it. I can break the status in two melees if I do a hammer swing and a normal swing, and a normal melee, instead of the, the usual three. More hammer nade boosting through another great mine moment. As I said, there are a lot of them in this level. 
I can actually try a small DC launch here. Let's see if I can get it. It doesn't save that much time, but it's pretty cool. Ah, I didn't get it, but uh, it's pretty much free to go for. It doesn't really lose any time if you fail it, so well, I just go for it. You got a little one. Yeah, it's a very small boost. We need to buy this this time. room is. Uh, Reactor room. It can be kind of annoying if you get bad spawns, but it looks like we're fine here. Oh yeah, there aren't that many enemies pestering me here, so I should be fine to just destroy these reactors from uh, the safety of my bubble shield here. And uh, you don't need to kill any enemies. The only thing to progress, you need to do pro to uh, progress the, the mission is uh, destroy the uh, reactors there. And that's actually, I guess we can go into the lore here. This. It's going to be destroying the, the ship we're inside of. So now we need to escape. You heard it, Chief. Not for long. We and uh, now we're pretty much just walking back right, to the start of the mission. It's a little different this time around because there's a bunch of explosions going on. And some new pathways have opened up, I guess. And there's m new enemies, of course. Get through that area pretty easily by just walking at the near the ceiling but the enemies can't really shoot me and uh, this is where the uh, the DC the deployable cover I left earlier is gonna hopefully come in useful if I can get the jump so it's right there and above it is a hole in the ceiling there and I should be able to get off it hopefully yep there we go and uh, that skips a small section You're not really supposed to be up here when you're going backwards to the level. Oh, that's a shotgun behind me. That's scary. Oh, dear. Okay, I think, I think we're fine. I can do uh, a donation while I uh, finish this mission. Let's get a quick plug on their sponsors here. Uh, do you know about Chrono GG? They put one game on sale every 24 hours, and for the duration of ESA, a large part of every game sold will be going to charity. Have a look at chrono.gg to see what's on sale today. Alright, so I made sure to empty my brutes out there at the end. By the way, this wall doesn't exist. You can just throw nades right through it. Uh, yeah, I made a note to empty my brute shot because otherwise I would carry over my weapons to the next mission and uh, I actually don't want that because if I don't carry over if I don't have any uh, ammunition the game will just say oh you, You're not gonna want to carry over those weapons with no ammunition. So it gives us new rockets or new uh, new weapons which just happens to be a fully loaded rocket launcher, which is gonna be coming in very useful It's just a, a short walk to the first enemy encounter here. Doing some slide jumps to get there faster. Here's a pretty big slide jump if I can get it. Uh, got a bit of a boost, I guess. Alright, so there's gonna be a flood here with a hammer. We're uh, just gonna steal it from him real quick. It's gonna come in useful. There's uh, a bunch of enemies here. We're just gonna be trying to get our get through quickly while they're spawning, so they can't really shoot us. Uh, I d oh, did I? Oh, oh. All right, close. Yeah, I was trying to do a jump there. Pull the hark. Shoutouts. What? I couldn't grab the hammer for some reason. Shoutouts to Hark the Shark. The best. Uh, the, per the best person to ask if you're wondering how to miss that jump. Alright. Hopefully this AR flaw doesn't shoot me. Okay. So we're up here. Um, you're supposed to go up this go up this tower. Not this way. Like, up, up these ramps. Like, three winding paths. It's really slow. We can just get up here real fast and uh, start the wave fight that's up here early. We're gonna be shooting a rocket there to kill Johnson. Let's skip some dialogue later on. Don't worry, he gets back up. Well, we are 
finally doing what he wanted. Keep moving, Chief. I got your back. Did the waves fight? Okay. I don't know. The fight took a very long time to start for some reason. I'm not sure what happened there. Having some uh, rockets to refill here, oh. and uh, we're gonna make it back up in time for the second wave. Hopefully, we have uh, some AIs, some allied NPCs to uh, help us clear this out. So it's they're actually killing some stuff when we're down there. It's not a complete waste of time. I'm just gonna be sitting up here, pretty much trying to BR the enemies down as they spawn. Now I need to look out for the last enemy of this wave. Every There are three waves to this fight, and at the, uh, at the end of every wave there's a boss enemy, and they can even have, either have rockets or a fuel rod. I really need to ro watch out if they have rockets, because that's, that's really deadly. Killing the third wave here, as they spawn pretty much. That was a rocket. Oh! Oh, that's a molar. Yeah, they, they we had a good checkpoint there. So molars one-shot you if they're close. It's basically the Covenant version of the shotgun. Alright, that's uh, the way fight finished, so now this door is going to open up. This door is kind of the uh, the skip we kind of want to find right now. Uh, we know that if we get through that door, we can actually just skip the fight. There aren't any required triggers or anything, so if you could find a way through that door, then it would pretty much save like two minutes. And, uh, it would be a really nice skip, but uh, we haven't found a way yet. To rebuild itself on this ring. Coming into a very hard, epic boss fight here against 3 for 3 Guilty Spark. He's turned on us. He used to be our friend. He's not anymore. You can actually do a small time saver here. You can't really jump behind him because he has his, like, he blocks you like that. But I can jump around that by doing a jump off this auto turret in midair. Doing an equipment jump like that, and then I have a boost. So I'm behind him right now, and I can grab Johnson's laser early. You're not, I'm not supposed to have a laser at this point. And uh, I'm going to set myself up in a precise spot here. Watch for a visual cue. Start charging my laser, and we can get an early shot on Spark like, like that. And I think it saves around 7 seconds. Gonna be trying to kind of smuggle my hammer into the next area here. If I put it at the door, oh, probably might work. All right, we'll see. I think it fell over, which yeah, it might not work. But uh, we could potentially grab it through the door here. We're not supposed to be able to get our weapons through. Oh, we got it. All right. So now we have a hammer for this section, which we're gonna be able to do some uh, hammer boost and uh, a small skip with. So we're going to be using the dual plasma rifles here. They're pretty useful. Pretty much the, the most consistent way, most consistently fast way to get through this area. There's two sentinels here. I'm going to hide in this covey to hopefully get them aggro to the flood so they won't bother me. So yeah, they're shooting at the flood right now. 
Sentinels melt you very fast in this game. They're probably the highest DPS uh, enemy in the game. Alright, we got through that area pretty well. If you're doing ILs at this level, that area is very annoying because you kind of have to just YOLO it and try to just run through without the enemies and it's, it can be really annoying if you get bad uh, bad spawns and stuff. This room can be a little annoying too, but I have a bubble shield, so hopefully it'll be fine. Try to block some enemy fire by putting that down there. Can stop those carriers from exploding on you if you shoot them while they're in their kind of explodey animation. Do some hammer boosts here. There, Johnson's warthog. Come on, Spartan. All right, go, so go, go. this is the last part of the game, the warthog run. It's about. I think four or four and a half minutes of cool warthog driving with epic music and uh, some some cool tricks and jumps. So enjoy, I suppose. It's I guess it's kind of a, a throwback to the ending of Halo Combat Evolved, where you're doing something similar. I'm gonna be doing a, a small just skip here, jumping to this. Uh, place early. It doesn't really save that much time where, I mean, you don't really get here any earlier than you would otherwise, but you skip a trigger that spawns some enemies here, so there won't be enemies here to bother us, which is really nice. Not necessarily because they're much of a threat, but uh, they can kind of shoot you and flip you over and lose you time like that. So here I'm going to be doing a small skip using the hammer that I managed to carry over through the cutscene. This, this small roundabout section, and you can skip it if you manage to get your warthog up this ledge, which I'm going to try to do with the hammer. Oh. My warthog was in a bad spot there. I have to adjust it. Right, this should be better. Oh, barely missed it. This doesn't really save that much time, but I think it's pretty cool, so I do it anyways. Oh. <laughs> it's getting so close every time. Yeah. Oh. Alright. Fifth time's the charm. What? Sixth try is the charm. Alright, this time. There we go. First try, almost. By the way, that saves like two seconds if you get it first try. <laughs> There's another one of those roundabout uh, sections coming up, and we're gonna skip this one too. Uh, in, a, in a different way. Or well, I'm gonna try to skip it at least. See how it goes. There's a, if you get, if you manage to keep a lot of speed through this area, you can actually just jump onto the same ledge that I hammered my warthog onto. So I'm gonna try to do that. I lost some speed there, so it might be kind of tight. Okay, we made it. Nice one. Alright, so we're pretty much on the last minute and a half of the game now, and it's mostly just driving, so I want to do a quick, sh uh, a couple of quick shoutouts uh, for the end of the run here. I guess first I should mention uh, HaloRuns.com. Uh, did somebody say HaloRuns.com? I, I think they did, I'm not sure. Anyways, HaloRuns.com is the number one site for all your Halo speedrunning needs, so 
If you enjoy this run or is interested in any other Halo speedrun, go check out HaloRuns.com. Um, I want to give a shout out to Paradoxic. He actually donated during this run. He's an awesome guy and he's a great voice in the community, full of positivity, and he always welcomes new runners with a smile. So, if you want to learn to run this game, Paradoxic would definitely be there to encourage you and help you in any way possible. He was certainly a big help when I tried to run this game, so shout out to him. Uh, another shout out, I want to give a shout out to History100. He's a Japanese runner of this game. Uh, he doesn't speak English that well, and he's always been kind of, uh, I guess, away from the community a bit. But, uh, and uh, he has stopped running for a while. We haven't seen him for a while, but uh, hope he's okay, doing well. And uh, he's definitely, if there's if there's one co person who's contributed the most to this run, to this route, there's definitely History 100. The game wouldn't be where it is today without him, so huge shout out to him. He's an amazing runner at this game. Alright, coming up on the last jump of the game. Time is coming up here. Oh, nice panel. Sometimes I kind of took chances there. Sometimes the pa those panels are solid, and sometimes they aren't. So time is when the screen goes black. There we go. That's Halo 3. Good job. That was really fast. Nice. Yeah, that was uh, that was a really good run. My goal was uh, sub 130, so I so I smashed that. That was really good. Definitely happy with that. So yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you, ESA, for having me.